Sí, buenas noches. En este momento vamos a comenzar ya con la clase de hoy. Buenas noches, Lady. Gracias por estar eh, conectada. Buenas noches, Luis. Ahí está apareciendo Katia. Así que ya vamos a comenzar con la clase de hoy. Entonces, eh, nada más vamos a repasar un poco acerca de los acerca de los tips que estábamos hablando ayer y vamos a comenzar con la práctica, ¿verdad? Vamos a dar un poco más de información y vamos a empezar con la práctica. Entonces, ayer estábamos hablando de how to scheme, ¿verdad? So, yesterday we were talking about how to scheme. What is scheming? What do you remember about that? Scheme, it's a reading strategy. Exactly. Scheming is a reading strategy, like just to read just the general information about the passages, right? For example, in the TOEFL test, we are going to see, uh, we are going to have three of these texts, three of these, and we are going to answer around 10 questions per each text. And we are going to have around 60 minutes to complete the reading part. So uh, this is the text, uh, this is the like a similar text that we are going to have in, in the test, right? So this is just an example. And that's the reason why we, uh, it's important to skim. Also, we have active reading and also uh, no previous experience versus some previous experience, right? When we read, sometimes um, it is kind of difficult to understand the story and the passages because we don't have previous experience. For example, we don't know a lot about Japanese uh, history or French history. And if we start reading, probably it, it's, it's going to be kind of confusing. But if we, uh, for example, we start reading about the history of El Salvador or something that we are related to, uh, it's going to be easier, right? It's going to be, um, the words are going to be familiar for us. Okay, so thank you for connecting, Sirhan, Alex, and Miguel. Thank you for being here. Now we are just uh, providing some tips and reviews about uh, yesterday's class. So skimming the passage should take you less than two minutes. Do it read actively and put yourself in a better position to answer all the questions. So this is just a recommendation. You don't have to put into practice everything. So if it works for you, remember that you can do it, even if it doesn't, okay, you can look for another strategy. What we are going to study today is just the body paragraph structure. That is important because that's how we are going to know like where to look for the answers. The body paragraph usually follows the specific structure. So the first sentence in the paragraph is the topic sentence. It introduces the main idea. The second sentence is an specified main idea. From the third to the sixth sentence, we provide additional details and examples to explain the main idea. And the last one is to sum up or transition to the next paragraph's idea. And this is an example, right? For example, this is a very simple text, a paragraph about my childhood. My childhood was much different from others. So that is the main idea of the paragraph. The second sentence is, I grew up in Valley Stream and suburb of New York City. And then we can see different details in the paragraph. So the last sentence is going to sum up everything or is going to uh, be like a transition to the next paragraph. So if a statement sounds general, it is probably located in the beginning of the paragraph. And if the statement contains specific details, it is probably located later in the paragraph. So this is how it looks, the paragraph um, divided in different ideas, right? This is the yellow one is the topic idea. The red one is the main idea of the paragraph. After the second sentence, we have details, right? Details in the paragraph and the last, sentence is just to sum up the transition or the next paragraph idea. So that is how we are going to see the paragraphs, how, how we are going to identify them. This is another sentence, another paragraph, sorry. And we can see there the topic or the, the topic sentence that introduces the main idea. 
specific main idea, additional details, and sum up or transition to the next paragraph. So how can this help you to eliminate choices to answer uh, the test, right, in the reading part? For example, we have here, um, according, uh, according to the question, right, according to paragraph one, what did transcendentalists do? So if we can see here, transcendentalists, and if we start reading uh, the paragraph, the first sentence is just uh, talking about transcendentalism. So it's talking about transcendentalism. No, it's talking about transcendentalism. So we are not going to look here in the second sentence. It's talking about transcendentalism because it's explaining what that is. And in uh, the third sentence, we can see here that it is talking about transcendentalists. Transcendentalists were critical of mainstream American culture. So we can start looking for uh, the answer here in this sentence, not here, not here, not at the end, but in the middle, in the details, right? So that's uh, why it is important to know how a paragraph is structured. Also, yesterday, somebody was talking about keywords. Keywords provide the most valuable information in a given statement. They usually consist of nouns, verbs, and adjectives. So we are going to look for keywords. For example, in this sentence, what is the keyword? Cat, right? And house, nouns. The, is, in, the, those are not keywords. So we study keywords to read the question faster, to find information in the passage faster, trigger active reading strategies, and become a more efficient test taker. Keywords are not function words. So function words are prepositions, articles, auxiliary verbs, models, conjunctions, pronouns, demonstratives. So all of those are not um, keywords. So if we can see here, now we are uh, omitting all the function words about, and we are just focusing in keywords, right? So what are keywords? Content words, nouns, adjectives, adverbs, main verbs. Those are keywords. So we need to focus on uh, keywords. And this is um, how we can differentiate or how we are going to look for keywords, right? Game theories discover, altruistic behavior animals, Columbus, solar systems, earliest history. So that's what we are need to look for. And then we are going to look for um, the answer in the paragraph. So we have uh, three roles. Keywords are not function words. Keywords are usually content words and keywords do not include typical TOEFL questions wording. And this is the way that we are going to omit all of the non-function words and keywords, right? So the keywords, gives us the information that we need. Like this one, for example, what have game theorists discovered about altruistic behavior in animals? So if we start reading about this, like evolutionary game theory and modification of classic game, game theory in mathematics. So we need to look for uh, keywords, right? Altruistic behavior animals, right? So we need to look for that altruistic. So we can see here, that it is here, selfish and altruistic. So we can start looking here for um, our answer, right? So that's why important, uh, that's why it is important to look for keywords. And these are the keywords that we are going to see in this paragraph. For example, game theories discover altruistic behavior, or in this one, Columbus, right? Columbus is the only keyword. So we have Columbus here and we have Columbus here. So we can start looking for it here in these two paragraphs, in these two sentences. Okay, what do you think is the best way to improve TOEFL reading scores like scheme, recognize paragraph structure and increase your speed with keywords? Let's see, we have Lady, Katia, Sirhan, Miguel, Marielos, Milton, Alex, Juan Jose, Sara, and Myra. Do you have any question right now about the keywords? Any comments? No, teacher. For the moment, no. Okay, perfect. We are going to practice today, so you don't have to worry about that. We are going to practice in a moment. 
So I just want to review this very quickly for you to have this, um, this information so you can put it into practice. So this is uh, vocabulary questions. We are going to practice today with vocabulary questions and we are going to practice with other kind of questions also. For example, this is uh, one example. It says, um, the question is, the phrase shedding light is closest in meaning to bring it out, making bright, bringing up or making clear. So that is a vocabulary question. You can find some of these in the test, okay? Not all of them will be vocabulary questions, just some of them. We are going to talk about questions later. So in this case, uh, we can see here, shedding light is here. And uh, if we read the sentence, it says, polybotanists trace the evolution of plants by following the modifications in plant morphology shedding light on the connection between existing plants by identifying common ancestors that display the same traits. So with this information, what do you think is the best option? Bringing out, making bright, bringing up, or making clear? What is the correct answer? What do they want to say there? What would be like the best synonym? Because Many of them can be like the correct answer, right? But one is best than the others. I think that it could be letter C, bringing up. Bringing up, okay. So we have here Juan Jose, it's, he says bringing up, right? Bringing up. Another opinion? For me, teacher, earlier B, making bright. Making bright, why? Why, Milton? Because the phrase is shedding light mm -hmm. is referred to a light. A light oh. and bright. It's synonyms. Synonym. Yes, mm -hmm. our synonym. So making bright, shedding light. Okay, very good. And over there, Juan Jose was uh, saying bringing up. Bringing up, the meaning in Spanish is como sacar al tema, sacar como. Yes, yes, not right. Yes, it's, it's the other. I, 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 I agree. It could be so, little B. Making bright. Yeah. So it can be making bright. Somebody else? No, yes, for me, I it's think letter, it's letter, B. letter B. Bright. Bright, making bright. Making bright. Yes. Making, making bright. Because it's synonym, shedding light and making bright. That's everybody. That, so everybody says that it's making bright, right? Okay. Yes. Okay, let's see. Teacher. Yes. Uh, for me, is letter D. Making yes, clear. Making clear for you, Alex. Why? Yeah, shedding light is uh, is is um, for me is a uh, uh, clarify. Mm -hmm. If for clarify, it's... making clear is um, is it is the sign channel. Okay. <laughs> for me. <laughs> Okay, for you. So you need to look for the answers in your logic, right? As I already mentioned, everybody thinks differently. You see, somebody is saying making bright, somebody was saying bringing up. So you need to verify that. So shedding light literally means arrojando luz, como tirando la luz. Está hablando de forma, este, no literal, verdad? Sino figurativa, figurative way, right? Figurative way. So we need to interpret that. So it's shedding light. So it says, a paleobona, paleobotanist trace the evolution of plants by following the modifications in plant morphology, shedding light on the connection between existing plants by identifying common ancestors that display the same traits. So we need to understand the sentence, first of all. We need to understand the sentence. This is academic academic uh, language, right? So the answer is D, making clear. Very good, Alex, very good. Because they are shedding light. Ellos están esclareciendo. Están haciendo eh, claro eso. Están you know, making clear the connection between existing plants. In, in, it seems letter A, bringing out, Mencionar, bringing out, can be a good answer. 
but letter D is a better answer. So bringing out could be a good answer, but the best answer is making clear. Shedding light is synonym for making clear in this context. So that is the answer. We have different <laughs> questions. Uh, have you worked in the platform already? ¿Ya trabajaron en la plataforma? Have you worked there? No, yet. Not yet. Okay, try to work because in the platform tomorrow we are going to work with the words uh, or the questions that are mentioned in the platform, okay? We have <laughs> vocabulary questions, rhetorical purpose questions, inferring questions, sentence simplification questions, insert text, uh, text questions, factual information questions, negative factual information questions, reference questions, fill in table questions, and organization questions. We have 10 different types. And in this case, uh, they are not going to tell you uh, this is a vocabulary question, or this is a sentence simplification question. You need to identify that. So this is a vocabulary question. We are going to read uh, like well, 10 of them to today. We are going to practice. So yesterday we were talking about how to practice with short passages. That's why we are going to work with short passages, not with long tests. Uh, also with... Uh, review the structure we are going to practice with a timer we are going to review the answers remember you need to review the answers to know why do we answer correctly and why do we answer incorrectly right everything works and need to we need to improve our vocabulary because this is not normal vocabulary this is like academic vocabulary for TOEFL is academic vocabulary so um we have three texts as i already mentioned uh, you will have 10 different types of questions in each text for TOEFL, and you need to answer 30 questions in 60 minutes. So if you're going to take the TOEFL, you need to take your time, right? Um, also, we are going to work with short passages because it improves your comprehension, also your English fluency and your vocabulary. And um, we are going to expose, to expose, to be exposed to different topics, right? So um, it says, when you do a single reading passage and answer 14 questions about it, you are reflecting on the entire experience of a 20 minute reading exercise. So normally you are going to take around 20 minutes to finish the reading text part for, for each, right? Okay. And the text that we are going, or we were mentioning yesterday is, uh, let's see here. It's biology, history, geology, psychology, environmental science, ecology, astronomy, education, art, and archaeology. These are all the questions that we are going to have in this test. So the vocabulary type, they are going to appear like three or six, and you have 60 seconds to answer those. So we are going to work with this time. I will give you 60 seconds to work in vocabulary questions. And uh, the vocabulary question is uh, the word or this word in paragraph two is closest in the meaning to, So it's very, very similar to what we did already. We have factual information questions. We have 90 seconds. Factual information questions are like according to this paragraph or uh, on the following paragraph or in this paragraph in paragraph four is stated that. We have negative factual in, uh, information. Those are kind of difficult because you need to find the information that is incorrect. So you will have four options and three of them will be correct and you need to find the incorrect one. We have inference questions. Inference questions are kind of difficult also because you need to understand the question and you need to uh, explain your point of view. We have rhetorical purpose questions like in paragraph six, the author discusses in order to, or why does the author mention? So you need to explain uh, what the author uh, wanted to write there, wanted to explain. Sentence simplification, also to simplify the sentence. Insert text, somebody, uh, sometimes you will find this kind of uh, a question in paragraph two, there is a missing sentence. Where will the sentence best fit? The reference question, the word uh, in paragraph one refers to. Pro summary is an introductory, introductory sentence for a brief summary of the passage is provided below. So you need to complete the summary by selecting three answer choices that express the most important ideas and organization. Organization questions are, for example, to complete a chart 
or to provide information about matching words, things like that. So all of the questions, depending on how difficult they are, you are going to take more time or less time. So you can be, or you can uh, finish in time, right? So we are going to practice with a timer. Today we are going, I'm going to have a timer here and I will tell you when to stop and we are going to continue with the next question. At the end, we are going to review the answers. Why? Because we need to know what is the correct answer and why it is wrong and why it is right, right? And you need to ask yourself, uh, why do you have an incorrect answer, right? Did I misread the passage or the question? Was there a difficult vocabulary that I didn't understand? Is this word part of the academic world list? Is there a particular question type I struggle to answer? So I, I am better with vocabulary, but I am worse with rhetorical question. Or how can I fix it, right? And what can I do to ensure I don't make the same mistake again? And we need to improve our, our vocabulary. So I'm going to give you also a link. I'm going to send it to uh, the a WhatsApp group, Academic World List. I'm, I'm going to show you that in a moment. I will, I guess I have it here. Just one moment, please, because I have a lot of information here. And I will send you this information so you can have it for you to practice or probably it can be useful for you. And you will be able to study, right? If you have time, you will be able to review it. So this is the academic word list. I will give you, or I will send this to the group. And as you can see here, these are just words. The academic word list is a compilation of the most frequent words in academic tests because TOEFL is for um, like academic or an academic objective, right? If you want to study or if you want to graduate from the university, you take the TOEFL. If you want to work, you take the TOEIC. The TOEIC is a different test and the contents are different, right? Um, so this is just for the TOEFL. These are types of words you will see most often and be expected to use in your own work. List one is the most common, list two, the next most common and so on. Each word is only one form of the word and it includes the other word form, for example, analysis and also includes analyze, analyzing and so on. So this first list is the most common words or are the most common words in academic tests. And we have a lot of words as you can see. So this is, this is academic language. So I will send this link to the group, okay? So you can have it. As you can see, we have here analysis, approach, area, assessment, assume, authority. So all of this, uh, all of this vocabulary will help you with, with this kind of reading. And also we are going to practice with um, rhetorical questions, right? So rhetorical questions are like this. For example, in this question, it says in the paragraph two, this is the paragraph two, right? Why does the author include the information that American wages have been increasing rapidly? So we need to explain why the author wrote that information in the paragraph to support the claim that houses are more affordable in America, to explain why the Australian housing market had weakened, to explain the future prospects of capital growth in housing industry, or to compare the strength of American economy against that of Australian economy. So what is the answer? Now we are going to look for the information. So it says American wages. So this is, these are the keywords, right? This is the information we are looking for, American wages. So if we start reading, we don't see any American wages here. We have early wages or sorry, early stages. And if we keep, keep on reading, we can find it here, right, wages. So this is the keyword, wages. And it says, and the USA is also enjoying strong economic growth. 
wages have been increasing rapidly and the unemployment rate continues to improve from already low levels. This is in stark contrast to the Australian economy. So we can read it until this comma, from wages until Australian economy. Okay, now we have read that information. What will be the answer? If you read again, it says, why does the author include the information that American wages have been increasingly rapidly? Which one is the best answer? Letter A, to support the claim that houses are more affordable in America. Letter B, to explain why the Australian housing market had weakened. Letter C, to explain the future prospects of capital growth in the housing industry. Letter D, to compare the strength of American economy against that of Australian economy. Which one? Letter D. I think it's letter D. Letter D. Why? Yes. Because in the paragraph, um, it's a compare in two countries, for example, USA and Australian exactly. economy. Exactly. Very good because it's comparing, right? Wages have been. The first part is talking about wages, right? Increasing rapidly and unemployment. And the second part it says is it is in, in stark contrast, right? Stark contrast of uh, uh, Australian economy. So it's contrasting, right? So probably can be letter D to compare the strength of American economy against that of Australian uh, economy. Uh, what is the meaning of stark is like, uh, it's like marking, right? It's like uh, making clear or making obvious something, right? So that is the meaning of Stark. So uh, with this kind of answers, uh, or sorry, questions, we are going to uh, see this kind of uh, verbs, right? So to support, to explain, to compare, to prove, to criticize, to contrast, to define. So rhetorical questions are always these kind of options, right? To support, to explain, to explain, to compare. That is a rhetorical question. So we use purpose statements. These are purpose statements to explain the correct answer or why somebody says something. And we need to call, uh, locate the, the phrase in the passage. So if we can see American wages is here and the answer is D. Exactly, that is correct. Now we are going to have another Another example, it says in paragraph four, this is paragraph four, all of it. Why does the author include the information about the word cafe? To define the meaning of coffee, to explain why political deals were done in coffee houses, to support the idea that the phenomenon of the cafe is relatively modern one, or to illustrate uh, that the term coffee has changed in, main, in meaning over the years. So if we can see, it's talking about cafes, right? Cafes, where hell deals used to get done and where deals still get done. So it's talking about cafes. So, but we need to look for word cafe. And if we look for it, where is it? It's here, right? Even the word cafe used in this context is new. So it's here, we are going to read from here to here, right, to understand. It says, but just as restaurants, cafes themselves are relatively, in French history, a recent phenomenon. Even the word cafe used in this context is new. So what is the answer for this one? Letter C. Letter C. I or think letter it's letter C. C. Letter C. Letter C. Or some people say letter A to define the meaning of coffee. Some people say letter C to support the idea that the phenomenon of the cafe is relatively modern one. Actually, it's letter C, right? Letter C. It says here, but just as restaurant and cafes themselves are relatively a recent phenomenon. A recent phenomenon. Even the word cafe use in this context is new. So we have different words that are explaining that the word cafe is new and the cafes actually are relatively a recent phenomenon. So is this one, right? To support the idea 
that the phenomenon of decay phi is a relatively modern one. Very good, okay. perfect, let us see. You see, so the, the answer is there, always is there. The answer is there. You just need to look for the information, keywords, or you need to read and pay attention. Are you ready to practice right now? Yes, right, yes. Yes, yes. 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 Of course, we are going to practice. So just allow me one moment, please. Let me prepare the readings and we are going to read. Remember that we are going to use only um, 60 seconds for vocabulary questions. We are going to start with vocabulary questions, okay? We are going to use this book. And at the end of this course, I will share the, the book if you want to write so you can keep on practicing because that is one of the tips. You can uh, practice as much as you can. You can do the, the same uh, the same test. It's recommendable to do the same test, not only once, but many times the same one. Okay, so we are going to read this one. It says text range between eighth grade level, which implies an appropriate text for a 14 year old American junior high school student and a 14th grade level, which implies an appropriate text for a 20 year old American college sophomore. So there are plenty of lower level passages that are exceedingly difficult. So approach each text with the same level of focus. So we are going to read 10 vocabulary questions. So we are going to have 60 seconds to answer. And then we are going to read 10 rhetorical purpose questions. And we are going to have from 90 to 120 seconds. Tomorrow we are going to practice with other two, right? And uh, Friday probably we will have a test or we are going to have uh, other two kind of questions, okay? Are you ready? Yeah, teacher. Okay, perfect. So I will give you 60 seconds. Let me check here. We are going to start here. And then you can write the name of or the topic of the sentence or, or, or the paragraph. And you can write letter A, B, C, because we don't have uh, time, right? We don't have, I'm sorry, the number of the paragraph, we don't have it. So I will give you one minute per answer. Okay, let me make it bigger. Are you able to read it? Yes. yes. Okay, so this is number one, and you have one minute starting right now. Human anatomy. Please read, please, and answer it. Okay, 10 seconds. Did you answer? Let us see. Okay, let us see. Write it, write it, write it, because at the end, we are going to check all of it, okay? okay? At the end, we are going to answer all of it. Now we are going to with the second one, the second one. This is types of pressure, okay? Another minute. Okay, did you answer it? Yes, okay. Yes. Very, very good, perfect. Now we are going to the third one. The third one, okay? 
just one moment. This is number three, tissue and aging, tissue and aging. Did you answer it? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, remember to write your answers, right? Because at the end we are going to, to check it. Now we're going with the fourth one. Number four, diseases. Okay, did you answer? Yes. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to number five. Fixed and wandering stars. Number five. Okay, did you answer it? Yeah. Yes? Okay, make sure about, about the answer, okay? If you need more time, you can let me know. But I think we're, go we're, we're doing good right now. Okay, now number six, okay, number six. Light as a photon. That is the name, light as a photon. Okay, did you answer? Yes. Okay, perfect. Now we are going to number seven, right? Number seven. Mass extinction. Mass extinction. Okay, did you answer? Okay, perfect. Now we're going to number seven, right? Or eight. <coughs> number seven, right? Number eight. Number eight, okay, number eight. Chemistry, the central science. Chemistry, the central science. And the options are these ones, okay? Four options.
Okay, you answer, right? Yes. Oh, perfect. Yes. Now, next one, number nine. The periodic table. Okay, you answer, right? Yeah. And now the last one, the last one. The ideal gas law. Okay, you answer, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So you need to, at least you need to uh, mm -hmm. read the sentence and then you will have an idea, right? Which one fits better with what you're trying to, to talk. So mm -hmm. these are all of the, the vocabulary questions that we are going to study. There are more, but we are going to stop right here and we are going to check the answers, okay? Now, let's see here. And let me look for the answers right now, so I will give you the answers. Okay, in human anatomy, what do you have? What do you have there? Which one is the correct one? What is the closest meaning to augment? Letter C. Letter C. Letter C. What is letter C? I don't know. It is here. Letter C. Let me look for it. Let me look for it. Letter C was validate. Validate. Let me share the screen here. So everybody says it's letter C, right? Yes. Yes. What is what is the meaning of augment? Oh. Augment is closest to increase, right? Increase. Aumentar. Yeah. Augment, aumentar, increase, incrementar, right? So so is that to augment or increase their knowledge? Letter B. Yes, letter B, letter B, perfect. Letter B. Now, number two, let's see number two. This one is number two, type of pressure, right? I have letter A. Letter A, letter A. Realize. 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 Yes. Let's yes. see here. Realize. Realize, okay, let me see here. I don't want you to check the answers before. Just let me look for. The answers here. I will give it to you like that all the time. Sorry, it's taking. So it says. I will look for. I'm going to open again this, this, so it won't take that, that much time. No, I'm not, no, I will read it de nuevo, so allow me one moment, please. Okay. Okay. Just let me see here. Reading, reading, reading. here.
Okay, um, I'm opening it again. Sorry for the long waiting. I guess that we are going to practice only the vocabulary. Okay, I have it now. Sorry for the long waiting. And I have it here. Okay, so this is the the one, right? So uh is the this is the second white type of pressure, yes. So everybody was saying um perceive is the word, is the is the answer, right? Or which yeah. one is the answer? Letter A, right? Letter, letter, a. letter a. a is a. correct. Is correct, exactly. It's letter A. Type of pressure is letter A because um, it's closest in meaning to perceive in this situation. Perceive. Let's see. Next one. Tissue and aging. Variability. The word variability is closest in meaning to which one? A, B, C, or D? A, B, C, D. D as in David, adaptability. Yes. Okay, in this case, variability, let me read. It says, all the cells, tissues, and organs are affected by senescence, the process of deteri deterioration with noticeably variability. So in this case, variability between individuals is a letter... C, difference. Variability is C, difference. It's closest to variability because it looks similar to difference, but the forming means um, probably some people might say B seems like a good choice, but it's letter C, right? Difference. Now diseases, this is number four, right? The word degradation is closest in meaning to deterioration, a. damage, a. construction, a. integration. Letter A. It's correct. Letter A, right? Deterioration. Degradation, deterioration of the ozone layer. Very good. Let's see next one. Fixed and wandering stars corresponded with is closest to deal with, measure, accounted for, or align with? Align with. Align with. Align with or accounted Line for? With. Align with. Align with. Okay. Align with. Align with. Right. Let me see here. B. <laughs> Yes, because um, accounted for is como representar, right? Representar. So in this case, with fixed and wandering star corresponding with is a uh, letter D, align with, align with. So which has yearly cycle that align with the flood in the land river. It's like the same, right? They were aligned. Let's see light as a proton. Light as a, as a photon, sorry. The word sophisticated is refined, basic, intelligent, or serious. A. A. A, A right? Sophisticated, sophisticated, refined. Exactly. Very good. So you see, it's not that difficult, right? It's not that difficult. Let's see, next one. Mass extinction. Intrigue is closest in meaning to occupy, guided, confused, or interested. Interesting. Letter, 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 letter C. Letter C or letter D. 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 Right. D. Interested. Exactly. Interested. D. Okay. The, um, they were interested. The paleontologists were interested. They were intrigued. Right. If someone is intrigued, they are interested in someone. Okay. Something. And uh, I guess this is. Almost the last one, right? How many do we have, El? No, there are two more. Two more. Okay. Chemistry, the central science. 
the word interconnectedness is closest in meaning to association, interrogation, dependence, or togetherness. It is. Yes. Letter, yes. letter D. 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 Is letter A, association. Yes. Association. Yes. association. Yes. Is closest in meaning to interconnectedness. If you break down, down this word into parts, Inter, what is the meaning of inter? In between, right? In between and connect, right? So association, interconnection, association, right? So you see, it, the, the answer is there. So they, they, they're kind of tricky. And this is the last one, right? Periodic table, right? Mm, no, there is no. no. One more, uh, okay. Nine. nine, this is number nine. The word dispute is closest in meaning to conversation, uh, argument, uh, experiment. Uh, 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 disassociation. Disassociation. Um, argument. The periodic table. It's letter B, right? B as argument. in boy. Uh, argument. argument. Dispute, yeah, argument. disputa, argument. Argumento, okay. that. Yes. Very good. So that is closest to meaning in this case. And the last one, the idea gas law, which is the correct one. Let's see. The word precise is closest in meaning to no, certain, accurate, proper. A, B, C, or D? Accurate. Accurate, exactly. Precise is accurate, right? Accurate. So it's closest in meaning. Because it's precise in this situation, in the context, right? So, very good. So, you see, how many goods do you have? ¿Cuántas tuvieron buenas? I have seven. Seven, yeah, very good. Three. You I have only seven. three. Yes. Only four. Four, okay. Only so, three. so, only four. three. Only four. No, teacher. <laughs> well, I'm not going problem. to get my goal. Yeah, but, but what do you think is the problem? You didn't understand the, the vocabulary because this is vocabulary. So what do we need to do? Increase the vocabulary, right? Yes. So that is this is only part for vocabulary. So you need to know uh -huh. what is precise. You need to know synonyms, right? Synonyms. And yesterday we give we gave you tips about that. Do you like this way to practice the reading? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. It, it will be it will be better if we read it uh, and then immediately we give you the answer or like we did it today. Like we did it today, I guess. Like, yes, because yes, in this case, you, at the end, yeah. Yeah, because in this way you feel like you are in a test, right? You're focused, you're concentrated, and at the end, I give you the answer. So tomorrow we are going uh, to practice with rhetorical answers. Try to work in the platform because to, over there they explain a little bit, a little bit of of the questions that we are going to work on tomorrow. Traten de trabajar en la plataforma, and we are going to do this. Remember that this first week is only reading, so we are going to read a lot, only reading. Next week is listening, so next week we are going to listen a lot of English, right? And then, and so on. In speaking, you are going to speak, 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 speak. And in writing, you are going to write, um, probably not here, but in your free time before the class, you will write something and we are going to analyze it, okay? So uh, do you have any question right now? Or the moment, that? I have a question teacher. in the TOEFL, uh, is the brands, the words? Sorry? In the TOEFL is the, the in question is the paragraph in brands, the words for analysis. Brands, the words. What do you mean by brands, the words for I analysis? I think it's highlighted. For example, this put. Ah, highlighted. Like this. Highlighted, yes. Yeah, the probably they are. Yeah, I guess they are highlighted, oh, no. but you have a big text. So you need to look, probably you need to look or uh, they give you like numbers. For example, in like paragraph number push? four, yes, in paragraph number four, in line, in the oh. third line, uh, dispute is closest to, for example. But they will, they will, if if it is a vocabulary question, they will specify it. 
okay? But in this, only in these questions and vocabulary, okay? Okay. Okay, the okay, rest one you will have, you will have to read a little bit more, like more, more sentences of the paragraph. But we are going to do that tomorrow, okay? Tonight, just rest, practice your vocabulary. This is academic vocabulary, is difficult. So I will see you tomorrow and we are going to keep on practicing, okay? Thank you. Okay, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye